Hello, everyone. Hello. Today, guess what we're doing? It's so exciting. You're going to go number dos in your pantalos. Am I right? <laughs> we uh -huh. created an original tag that we think we did. Someone yeah, might have done. <laughs> because we don't do research. I, I think it's original. Pretty good. It might be an original tag, um, but you guys probably already saw the title. So this is the Friday the Thirteenth tag. Yeah, Wait. and oh, yeah! Look at that. I didn't Why didn't you tell me? I would have put mine on. I thought you did that on purpose. I didn't know. Just <laughs> by accident when you were talking, I was like, oh, <laughs> awesome. We'll start again and put your proper t-shirt on. No, we've already started. Start again. Whoa! <laughs> you do not touch the machinery. Okay? Put, cut no, it. I'm fine. Cut. I'm on. no, I don't want to do it. Put now. your freaking shirt on. No, because on. now you're telling me to do it. Now I don't want to do Please. it. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> you sound a little domestic there, but we're back on track. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, the Friday the Thirteenth tag, um, we came up with it, fair and square. You did. Well, no, you helped. Oh. So these are all based on the Friday the 13th films, okay? And a we lot... We love Friday the 13th films. Yeah, I, I, it was kind of that, He-Man, and um, wrestling was kind of like my childhood. So, uh, yeah, very nostalgic here. But here's the thing. Um, some of these prompts are going to be spoilers, so if you consider yourself a horror fan, which A, you don't have to be to enjoy this tag, but if you consider yourself a horror fan and are going to be all and upset... And haven't seen if Friday I, the 13th. Yeah, if, if we ruin Friday the 13th for you... Movies, not just the one, all of them. All of them. Then whose fault is that really? Millennial. Am I right? Just get on with it. We haven't okay. got time to be faffing about. <laughs> so, prompt number one. A book where the mother is the villain. So that's a spoiler. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb and say Psycho by Robert Block. And you could say that the mother isn't the villain, but I beg to differ. That's a really good one. Did that never even occur to me. Really? I thought that would be like the first guess. I am so rubbish at times, guys. <laughs> you have no idea. The last like two hours it smells of like... smoke in here. I'm like, ah. <laughs> We've been like kind of racking our brain because we put this together. And I remember when we put it together and there were a couple times when Zoe was like, those are way too hard. You can't do that. No one will ever be able to do this. You need to make this easier. So this is the easier version it's of this easy. tag. It's not, it's not necessarily <laughs> hard. It's just like off the top of your head, I was like, oh, God. So I cheated a little bit and had to look at my Goodreads books that I've read. That's not cheating. And just saw if any, because my memory is not great at the best of times. And the fact that we don't have all of our bookcases here that we could just yeah, we couldn't like, like go along and, and try and, and see if it jogged our memory, yeah. could we? So we're like, yeah. Okay. Um, for mine, I chose a book. I've got my list, guys. I chose a book called Ghost Writer by John ha Is it Harwood or Harwood? I think it's Harwood. Yeah. I'll go with I can't Harwood. read my own writing, but I believe mm. it's Harwood. I've read all of his books so far. He's really good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> he basically writes like in Victorian style kind of mysteries, but with a, a supernatural element to it. Mm -hmm. And they're really well written. They're really convoluted, 
they're kind of like you don't know what the hell's going on and then it all comes back to it now this one particularly ghostwriter is like it's it's written about this lady called violet hathaway in the 1800s 1890s and she is um a horror writer she writes ghost stories he finds some old documentation and a photograph um in his mother's bedroom and she goes nuts with him for finding it, this stuff but he's obsessed with it then he can't stop thinking about it and basically it's the story of everything unwinding and for a lot of the time he starts to bit suspect his mother of being uh, of committing horrendous crimes and when i finished it i had to put the light on didn't i was that the one from the other night yes <laughs> i had to put the light on oh, i haven't done that's that for right. a long time yeah. i was yeah. really scared i was just like it like i was like afterwards i was like oh oh what that's what you were like <laughs> i was sitting up going babe are you, are you still awake <laughs> And I haven't done that for a long time, but it was really creepy. Um, and if you guys don't know what Psycho's about, again, I don't know what to tell you people. Well, a lot of people might not like horror books or horror stories. Okay, so, well, you can't ruin Psycho. Because it, like, hangs on that. Yeah. Well, it's basically <clears throat> about what... it's It's about this dude who runs his family's motel and he's a bit weird and this girl has some ill-gotten gains and turns up at the motel, oh, motel yeah that's it and do, do, strange do things happen yeah so now um number two for part two this was probably the hardest one to come up with so what we came up with yeah, okay. I can't do it right now. I'm not. A, I know, I I'm not a damn that. alchemist, though. So. <laughs> I know. I'm... So for part two, we're doing backwoods. So the pick that I'm picking for the pick is "River Girl" by Charles Williams. Mm. This um, is one I read in January, <clears throat> and it's about um, a sheriff or a deputy sure. who is. Kind of iffy because his boss is kind of um, a no good kind of sheriff. And they have like whorehouses and gambling establishments that pay them to keep them um, in business and stuff like that. And um, him and his wife are not getting along. And he decides he's going to go on a little fishing trip because he's totally burnt out and he sees this dude in a boat that looks really familiar, but he can't place it. And he goes way out into the boondocks of boondockville. And, um, while fishing, he gets a fishing hook stuck in his back cause he's a dope. And, um, he ends up seeing this girl in this weird little shack like out in the middle of nowhere on the side of the water and um, asks her to help him um, yeah, sh pull the hook out. And um, then some madness starts to happen. Um, now, this is not a horror novel. And none of these books... Fred's really scared. None of, like These books don't have to be horror. So if you don't like horror books, you could still hit all these prompts, I think. Yeah. So, um... <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Yes, everyone, listen! Um, Zoe's on her phone. <laughs> yes, I'm looking up something! Yeah, we like, everything, it's it's crazy. I had to look up something just now, too. Um, but yeah, so, River Girl by Charles Williams. It is excellent. Excellent, excellent. If you read Hill Girl by Charles Williams and didn't, like, you weren't in love with it, this one's way quicker and snappier. And for those of you, yes, there were a bunch of books that Charles Williams wrote that the publisher called Something Girl, Something Girl. So Hill Girl, River Girl, Big City Girl, um, was it Backwoods Girl? Like, 
it just Hill Girl sold so well that every other book he turned in, they just put the, those titles on them. But um, super good, and I can't remember the subgenre what it like the actual name of it's called. It's like swamp something. I don't know. Anyway, I can't think of it off the top of my head. I'll, it'll come to me like when we do part five, and I'll yell it out. Go ahead. What? what do you got? I, stop, I absolutely love anything to do with backwards, weird. Okay, so the first one I was going for non-horror. And the most recent one that I've read, probably, that springs to mind would be The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek by Kim Michelle Richardson. And now this has been, uh, like, in quite a few places. And it features um, a girl called Cussy who is, I've written this down so I don't um, forget, it features Roosevelt's Kentucky Pack Horse Library Project, which basically introduced so that people got employed by the, by the government to carry books to, you know, poor, tiny, isolated families all over the Appalachians. <laughs> all you know little tiny communities these a lot of them were women. swamp noir there we go see Ooh, see that sounds perfect it. to me swamp noir i love that it's it yeah it's right up my alley anyhow <laughs> these people were employed a lot of them were women and they would go around with pack horses or a donkey Mules. or something or a mule yeah with with saddlebags full of books and they'd exchange things and a lot of the times they that's not what their saddlebags were full of and a lot of times they would um make their own sort of scrapbooks full of recipes and things like that and people would share them and all that kind of stuff and it was really good is that how those books of like um pioneer like recipes and probably stuff like yeah that they were all got around That's yeah cool. and quilting you know oh. ideas and stuff like that and all sorts of um you know salves for burns and folk art uh -huh. Remember? all sorts of stuff but anyway this features cussy who is one of the famous blue people of kentucky and she has to d deal with all this prejudice. Is that yeah. why we were talking about that yes. that night? And it's an actual um, genetic um, defect. Not it's, it's not a genetic thing. It came from something. No, it's a genetic blood de um, defect where there isn't enough oxygen gets to cert get can get to the blood but cells. But weren't there or like a t like like a little town of a bunch of people who ended up like that? But they were all descended from. <clears throat> similar you know from the family and they spread out it was really weird oh. and there's a general like love of books and wanting to spread that to as many people as possible and people coming together because of their love of books and reading and wanting to learn but it's it's also about her story and having to deal with things and and set in an amazing environment i love all that and i loved it it was a really nice book so if any of that sounds interesting to you it was great okay and the next one is the black water site um saga by michael Madon mcdonald can't speak about that the black water saga there's six books i believe or seven books michael mcdowell wrote the screenplay for beetlejuice clue Oh, so good. All sorts of stuff that I didn't even know he wrote. But he he writes a lot of horror stuff that everything he's written so far. I keep forgetting we're not in love Every anymore. Every time I say Michael McDowell, this happens. What's his name? I don't know. I keep forgetting. Ding, 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 ding. Anyhow, if you like horror that he does, this, this is basically a start. Let me read quickly it's a long story it's a saga it's a huge it's like 45 the, hours right the audio yeah book. for the whole thing but you can get the books separately i did spill coffee i would myself. like to get them all separately because the covers are amazing for the separate books um but i've not been able to do that yet but that's on my wish <sighs> list so basically um 
Blackwater traces more than 50 years in the lives of the powerful Caskey family of Perdido, Alabama, under the influ influence of the mysterious and beautiful, but not quite human, Eleanor Dammert. The Dammert. The flood heralds the arrival of a visitor who will change the Caskey family and the town forever. Um, and it's just like, he's, he does this like amazing like family drama with everybody interacting with each other and all this kind of stuff going on. But with this really creepy, um, awesome kind of swamp supernatural element really going through it. Them. Oh, it's so do, honestly do, it's probably do, one of the do, best do, books do. i've read in a long long time really really enjoyed it so there's another backwards one and the what last the hell one is that, this because you said you mentioned the other one and the last one i can think of is and the ass saw the angel yeah look yeah. up and the ass saw the angel it's written by nick cave look up and the that, ass it's like a <laughs> It's Southern Gothic, and it's all written in the dialect of this young boy who was... I can't even remember it's that long. I, I, I read it. But he was born in a... I think he was born in, like, a dump. But he keeps seeing, like, this vision. It's it's incredible. But that's another classic example. And it's it's, it's probably one of my favourite books as well from years ago. I absolutely loved it. I'll have to reread it and see if I love it as much as I still... But it was weird. And really dark. Part three is in 3D, people. Friday the 13th, what? That's not part of my question. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying, part three is in 3D. Yeah. And in part three, this is where Jason gets the iconic hockey mask that he wears through the rest of the movies. So, um, we, number three, part three, is someone in a mask. And I'm going to use one of a book that I just finished recently called Murder on the Blue Train by Agatha Christie. It stars a cute little chap named Hercule. It doesn't sound like it's Poirot. That's what I said. You went, so, Hercule. Bow. No. Do you know, um, I'm not even joking. You did that for like an hour straight. Hercule. <laughs> Hercule, an hour. Um, <laughs> um, but in this book, there is a um, jewel thief that is very famous in the underground, and no one has ever seen the person's face, and they always come. I tried to make it very intriguing for everybody. I think you succeeded. Yeah, and it's about a murder on a blue train. Like Gordon. Was Gordon blue or is he red? The hell are you talking Thomas about? Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas oh, was blue. Was Gordon Thomas blue? was blue. That's Who's all Gordon? I know. Cause he's on Gordon the... was the scary one. Gordon is he the guy like who sells the fish sticks and the yellow slicker. I don't know what he's talking about either. Anyhow. The Gordon's Fisherman. <laughs> okay. All right, moving on. Okay, on. I'm going to, for mine, someone in a mask, I'm going to go for Freedom of the Mask. Now, this is number six in the Matthew Corbett series by Robert R. McGallan, McCammon. Why are you screaming at me? <laughs> I'm trying to be professional. You're doing a very good job. I've read almost everything he's written, I would say, and I love all of them. Now, these ones, he, the ones I generally love are the horror. So when I started re reading, reading this series, which is, it begins with Speaks the Nightbird, I believe. Matthew Corbett, I believe, is the, what, you, what would you call it? There's a, now I've re read the entire series of these and there's not a bad one among them they are so good now it's not horror though he do you i think is he just robert mccammon for the normal horror and then robert r mccammon maybe for these ones i'm not sure i'll have to look that up i don't know um but i'll read the first one in the series the carolinas 1699 so it's historical fiction and it's like 
sort of action thriller, but in an old sort of setting, historical setting, and they are so exciting and scary. They're really good. Basically, there's always like a little bit of a supernatural thing going on, but that's like not the is it, focus is he of it. the one who's going around with the older investigator guy? Yeah, there's two of them, but they don't always go together. The Carolina, 1699. The citizens of Fount Royal believe a witch has cursed their town with inexplicable tragedies, and they demand that beautiful widow Rachel Howard be tried and executed for witchcraft. Presiding over the trial is travelling magistrate Isaac Woodward, aided by his astute young clerk, Matthew Corbett. So I this is how you meet that, him, and yeah. he's just like a young boy at the beginning. Um, believing in Rachel's innocence, Matthew will soon confront the true evil at work in Foint Fount Royal. Um, and it's just basically really creepy, you know, like a town in the middle of nowhere with like, um, what you call what the thing with Vincent Price, the Witchfinder General. That oh. It's all that kind of, you know, court case and all that kind of thing going on and curses and or suspected curses and Matthew Corbett is the one who is just a young kid but he has to kind of find out what's going on and try and prove her innocence um, and it it's just the writing in it it's a big book as well but it's really well done it's so exciting so scary there's all sorts of like fights and thrills and chases and scariness and all that kind of stuff it's really and what's good. the book called again speaks the night bird but mine is freedom of the mask and it involves him getting stuck oh good job there. and Bring mine is freedom of the mask which is number six and he finds himself in bedlam jail in london and kind of it attracts the attention of this man in a big cloak and a gold mask who's going around killing people with a saber. So I would highly recommend those. Okay, and so part four is based on the final chapter. So a book that has, like, the best final chapter. Do you want me to do mine? Go ahead. I'll be quick. Here, it's not necessarily the best final chapter, but it's The Grapes of Wrath. It's the most memorable final chapter, I would say. Is that what I was talking to you about? I don't know, Why babe. Are you Who? You. <laughs> Am I screaming? You're being loud. It Sorry. was very. It wasn't the best. It was the most. It was very memorable. And also, yeah, East of Eden had a I've, very awesome last chapter as well. I recall. Yeah, Grapes of Wrath, dude. So if you haven't read yeah, Grapes that's of like, Wrath, that's. That's stuck out in my memory yeah. for a long time. I'm not going to say anything about yeah. it. But See, it this is this is a real hard one to do, but um, I'm going to say, uh, um, but yeah, so best final chapter, without a doubt, Gods of Mars, Edgar oh, really? Rice Burroughs. If you read that last chapter and you don't immediately rush out to get that next book, which is Warlord of Mars, there is something wrong with your soul that needs sorting out. Can like, I just say as well that the ones I was just talking about, the night, the Matthew Corbett, that always leaves like a cliffhanger. cliffhanger so that you want to read the next one as well. It's really good. Yeah, and I'm not, I don't want to say this, but I'll say it. Burroughs totally dropped the ball on the opening of warlord of mars oh yeah i remember you reading that i was so pissed like there were answers i wanted and i didn't get the ones i wanted so um part five in part five um it's called the new beginning like a, a new beginning um this is another spoiler jason's not in it okay so we have this other dude trying to pull a fast one. So for part five, A New Beginning, we have decided to talk about books that have a different protagonist. I picked <clears throat> uh, 
um, since I just did um, a Barsoom book, um, I'm going to stay there and do Chessmen of Mars, and then we won't go back to Edgar Rice Burroughs, I promise. But Chessmen of Mars is the fifth... Yeah, the fifth book in the Barsoom series. And um, instead of following John Carter, we're now following Gahan. And um, more importantly than that, instead of having Wula in, we have Gek. And Gek is my favorite character in any Edgar Rice Burroughs book. And this is the only book he's in. And it makes me want to, like, murder people. So you wish he'd been in all of them? I wish all the books were just about Gek. Just Gek. Gek is this giant head that um, crawls around and goes into these bodies that have no heads and controls the bodies. But he's like a big spider crab and he could like get out of them and then go do other stuff and then come back to him. And if one day he wants to be a boy, he could be a boy. And if the next day he wants to be a girl, he just jumps on a girl body as you do. Are you going to answer this or I'm are we skipping? <laughs> Why didn't you say something? <laughs> I'm telling you now. So part six, Jason Lives. This is about resurrection. Um, mine is Frankenstein. One of them is um, Lord of the Rings, because Gandalf is resurrected. Spoiler. Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the, the one that instantly sprang to mind after about an hour was Pet Cemetery. Oh, yeah. Because Pet Cemetery, as the, like a lot of people obviously know, is a Stephen King novel about a family who moved to um, a house next to a very busy road. Um, and they found that there's a pet cemetery behind the house. And when the little girl's cat um, gets hit by a truck on the road, they are introduced by their friendly neighbour to the pet cemetery, where, which is an ancient Indian burial ground, um, where the legend has it that you can bring things back from the dead. But you shouldn't. But you shouldn't do it. It's but never good. you shouldn't. They never come back the same. They never come back. So that was the one I thought of, which is a good that's one. That's a good one. I don't know why that didn't pop up. Because mm. um, part seven, A New Blood, is about um, a girl with telekinesis fighting Jason. In well, fact, yeah. they tried to sell it as Carrie versus Jason. So my pick was very easy for this, which is Carrie. Although, I will say, I don't like the ending of the book compared to the ending of the film. What did I put for this one? Oh, I did Stephen King as well, and I did The Institute, which is one of his more recent ones. Oh. And it's about kids in this government facility with supernatural powers it's really good i enjoyed it for one of his more modern ones i enjoyed that one that you've was... actually been liking all this modern stuff yeah like super lately part eight jason takes manhattan a book that takes place in manhattan or new york or on a boat going to new york what do you have I couldn't Is think it of anything. that takes place on a cruise ship? No, but I <laughs> wish it was. Mine was ah. one that I mentioned in the last tag, which is annoying because I didn't want to do that, but I couldn't think of anything else, any other books I've read it from New York. Still can't. This was The Witches of New York oh, by yeah. Amy McKay, uh -huh. which again, it's like a Victorian um, two witches have a, sh like, have a shop, a tea shop where the... Um, upper classes humour them because they don't really believe that they're dangerous if you know what I mean and they come in and have the like seances and the tarot read and they get teas made up for them to give them like blood potions and all that kind of stuff and I really enjoyed it so that's another one Nina's really trying to get my attention 
Yeah, because you're talking, and you're not talking to her. <laughs> um, <little> leghead. <clears throat> and she hated it. <laughs> she hated it. Um, so mine is a Mike Hammer novel. It's the third Mike Hammer novel. It is Vengeance is Mine. <clears throat> and um, the Mike Hammer books all pretty much take place in New York, and they go through all parts of New York um, trying to figure anything out. But this one was awesome because it's your typical... Um, there she, is. there she is. It's your typical trope where a dude wakes up and there's a dead body next to him. And it's his old friend that he was out drinking with the night before. And it seems like he committed suicide. But <laughs> it also seems like that that might not be the case. And so, of course, he's suspected but not suspected but he's kind of suspected, and um, so he's going, tracking down all this info, trying to figure out um, what happened to his buddy. Um, it's probably my, f I don't want to say it's my favorite out of those first, yeah, I think it is. I think it is my favorite out of the first, wow, One Lonely Night's really good, too. Mm, I'll say it's my favorite, just to, so it's on record um but yeah it's really good so part nine wasn't even called part nine it was called jason goes to hell and guess what happens in this um a bunch of body swapping and then at the end he goes might go to hell um but yeah goes to hell um and we got all sorts of fun stuff in here. Oh, and in fact, my answer is kind of... So, any book that has to do with hell or something occultish, what do you got? I have The Summer That Melted Everything by Tiffany McDaniel. Yeah? Yeah. Um, I'll read you it, because... You're going to read me the book? Yes. Okay. Fielding Bliss has never forgotten the summer of 1984, the year a heat wave scorched the small town of Brethard, Ohio, the year he became friends with the devil. When local prosecutor Autopsy Bliss publishes an invitation to the devil to come to the country town of Brethard, Ohio, nobody quite expected that he would turn up. They especially didn't expect him to turn up a tattered and bruised 13-year-old boy. Wow. It's really good. I loved it. Mine is actually the Necronomicon. Oh, wow. Which is actually in Jason Goes to Hell. It is. And it's the actual Necronomicon and Dagger from Army of Darkness. Boom. Wowzers. And the Necronomicon, the reason why I picked this, isn't because of um, it being a real book, but it's a fake grimoire um, made up by H.P. Lovecraft, um, supposedly written by the mad heir of Abdul al Hazred. And, um, <laughs> and um, its lineage goes through all sorts of stuff. Um, its original title was Alazif. You impressed yet? Always. Always. Um, but in the 70s, I think Berkeley, I could be wrong, it might be Avon, but I think it was Berkeley, had this um, occult book that just was a bunch of occultish stuff and kind of like a how-to of all this other junk by this dude who go, went by Simon. I don't really understand this part of it. But because everyone thought the Necronomicon was a real book, people would go into bookstores and ask if they had copies of the Necronomicon and all this stuff. It got back to the people at Berkeley, Oregon, whoever put this book out. I don't have it here, so I can't show you. Um... But uh, they're like, hey, we have that weird, janky occult book. Why don't we just call it the Necronomicon and we could be selling this all over the place. And um, that's exactly what they did. And um, I was listening to a podcast and um, I can't remember what podcast it was, 
but these guys found out that um, their college university had a copy of the Necronomicon. And it was in the, like, ancient book section that you have to, like, go in with gloves and they bring it out in the thing and stuff. It was made of human skin. That's what they thought they were going to see. And it was just a copy of this little janky paperback. Oh. Because it's supposed to be this ancient text. Wow. And so they were really let down. And I thought that was freaking hysterical. And I remember the first time I saw this book, I was at this weird little witchy shop in Cyprus called More Joy. M-O-R-J-O-Y. And um, even going in there, I thought, I'm like, I shouldn't. And then I was just like <laughs> walking like around. <laughs> and on the spine imagine. of the Necronomicon, it's like really big letters like Necronomicon. It like screams at you when you walk by it. And I saw it and I went, and I, went, and I touched it and I felt evil just <laughs> touching it. And um, the whole thing is complete balderdash and hogwash. Bunkum. Okay. So next we have. In space, because the tenth installment, Jason uh, X, which was originally supposed to just be a Roman numeral ten, but when it, it came out like Jason X, everyone just started calling it that. So then that's what they did, and this takes place many many years in the future, um, and he gets cryogenically frozen. And then many, 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 many more years in the future, some people come back to Earth and um, to see if they could actually find... No, they find him on accident and then take him back. And they're like, oh my gosh, we're going to make so much money. We actually have the body of Jason Voorhees. Um, this is going to be great. And craziness ensues. So this is just like a book that's in space. I went for Children of Time by Adrian Tchaikovsky. Yeah? It's really good. Yep. It's basically, I think it's one of three. This is the first one in the series. Um, and it's basically about this last, like the last people of Earth. Um, there's a, a small number of people on this spaceship and they're touring around sp space trying to find somewhere to recolonize so that they can start the human race again. Earth's destroyed, obviously, a long time in the future. Basically, the, another scientist had been trying to use um, a virus in order to um, genetically enhance apes, I believe instead of humans but because it was such a long time ago there's other species on the planet that have genetically modified and grown species that you probably wouldn't want to be really large oh yeah yes just natural species that you see every day but a certain species of animal is dominant now you know, from someone who loves biology and... That sounds really good. It, it's great. It's a really good book. It is. Um, my pick for space is the entire Foundation series um, by Isaac Asimov. These books... Um, I just... I can't... I can't stress enough just how amazing and important they feel like especially the first three um they feel important like you almost feel like you're like a part of something good that's going to happen by reading these books if that makes any sense um it's a huge epic um and i think i like the first three the best because they were written in parts and then kind of put together and had wraparounds put into them um the the rest of the books i think are actually more action-packed and more um 
jammy, which I like better, but those first three books are just so good. So, the next movie, um, the 11th film in the franchise, was Freddy vs. Jason. So, and that was a long time coming, and it was such a big deal for me when it came out, because that's something I had been um, fantasy booking in my head since I was eight. So, um, it was pretty cool. And my mashup is the Cthulhu Mythos. This might be a little bit of a cheat. But the fact that Lovecraft, Robert E. Howard, um, Clark Ashton Smith, Frank Belknap Long, Fritz Leiber, Robert Block, um, all these dudes, like, kind of shared this, like, universe that they had their own things in. And they would all share their own grimoires. Like, um, Lovecraft would use um, unspoken unnameable cults that robert e howard used and they would all use like clark ashton smith's um the book of ebon and um robert block's something d mysterious i can't ever remember the name of it um they all shared all this stuff and like um in the and a lot of the conan stories before l sprague de camp got his muddy little paws on him there was a lot of Cthulhu mythos-based stuff in the Conan stories. And again, like I said in the other video, not a lot, but it was there. And he took all that out. Um, in uh, a Bran MacMorn story, they talk about um, Cthulhu and Real Ye and all this other stuff. It's just, it's so cool that they all were able to use this stuff as like a backdrop for things. And, um, people have been using it ever since. I mean, good God. It's everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mashup. Wow. What's your favorite mashup, babe? Mine is the Cthulhu case books. Um, which is actual, hang on, James Lovegrove. And this is a mashup between H.P. Lovecraft and Sherlock Holmes. Is it H.P. Lovecraft in the story? No. Um, and basically, <laughs> it's Watson saying that he has three stories to tell, which kind of are the real things that Sherlock and him had to deal with from an early age. And all the other things were made up. See, that's where I get upset and why you I don't have to bit, do that. You don't have to do that. But basically the horror of these three stories um damaged them both so much but they couldn't talk about that. They've never talked about it. So they've made other things up in order to put people off the scent kind of thing and make Sherlock the person he is you can add to that's a, no but you can add to a canon of stuff without saying everything that came before this isn't true yeah i know I that's like ridiculous that. it is but i think the main point of it is that the real life horror was so horrendous that they had to make up a false reality. the real life horror is them saying all these other things that you've read is crap Lovecraftian based stories that Sherlock has to, and Watson have to deal with and the first one of this is like it was really good fun dude they go together really... so well like, yeah the idea of like especially later Lovecraft stuff when everything was like there's an investigator there's a, a professor there's a like all of the archetypes yeah you know Sherlock Holmes fits into that so perfectly it but really I'm just does. so pissed that they Don't had to let do that, that. Bother you. but it's, it's not... just like why would you do that I don't know read it and see whether you find that as bad as you think I just it think is. it's insulting oh god uh -oh. here he goes okay best retelling because the next one was the pseudo remake of Friday the 13th that was kind of just like Friday the 13th meets the Hills Have Eyes. Um, so with this, I don't read retellings 
if I know it's a retail, if someone says like, oh, this is a retelling of something, I'm like, yeah, I'm not interested then. But if it ends up being a retelling of something, or like, I don't know that until after the fact, and the author's like, yeah, I based it on, then I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, you know? But, um, so the one I picked for this is Mina by Author Unknown, because I don't remember and I don't have the book here. But what it is, is a, it's not necessarily a retelling of Dracula, but it's if things happened a little bit different, how things would have happened after Dracula would have ended, if that makes sense. And I didn't realize that it was like kind of like an erotic romance book. Yeah. Just a friend of ours well, gave just it. Just an added bonus. Well, it got really steamy, and I'm like, wow, this is, like, getting a bit rough around the edges here. Yeah, um, where you're like, oh, this is too much for me. I, I had to loosen, loosen my it. collar. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it was, like, kind of erotic and weird. But um, the story itself was really cool. And the portrayal of Dracula was actually really cool. But, um, yeah, so that's mine. Mine is a Dracula retelling as well. Um, oh, yeah. And it is the Anno Dracula series by Kim Newman, who is um, a horror writer, and he also is a journalist, I believe, um, and a critic. Um, and these were the, seriously, they were such good books. They are brilliant. And the first one, Anno Dracula, is set in the 1800s, I believe, and Queen Victoria has remarried Count Dracula. It's an alternative reality where he didn't get killed by Van Helsing. Van Helsing was, like, killed, I believe, in, or shamed because he failed at killing Dracula. Um, and instead, Dracula marries the sovereign of the British Empire and becomes incredibly powerful. Um, and, and it's rules kind of England with an iron fist. Yeah, and there's the vampires are part of accepted society, if you know what I mean. And not only that, there are the Ripper is involved, and the last one. People are like, last one? What the? Yeah, why H -E -double, double hockey one? sticks? What? Because in the late eighties. There was a Friday the 13th, the series. And um, it doesn't get a lot of love. And it's I think it's because of the cast is the reason why it doesn't get a lot of love. But it's also because there was no Jason in it. What it was about was a haunted antique shop mm. with haunted items. And this guy inherits the gift shop and then realizes that all these items are haunted and so he has to go monster of the week style and find all of these items okay mm. so this question is a nice fun one what is the best book find you had at not a bookstore but a thrift shop or an antique shop the one i think i mentioned in the last one that i love getting the hound of the baskervilles and we found Oh, we found tons of those, like all a different penguin kinds. penguin one, but I'll put a picture of the one that I that we found. There was a couple of ones, actually, yeah. but the, there was one particular that I really like of the Hounds of the Baskervilles. We got that in, was it Dove or was it in, I can't remember where we got it, but it was definitely a thrift book yeah. rather than buying it online or whatever. It was definitely yeah. a thrift shop find. Yeah. All right. So um, <laughs> the one I have I is a book. I give this guy a lot of shit, which is very much deserved. But I like the short stuff, his short stories. But even in this book, one of the short stories is fluffed like you wouldn't believe. Look at this ridiculously orange copy of Different Seasons by Stephen King. Look at how bleached. Sun bleached. Oh, this is so orange. Um, this era 
of Stephen King paperbacks is like me growing up. Mm-hmm. Like I had Cujo like this. I had. <laughs> but these are like, um, like my childhood. But this ridiculously orange book, this on my bookcase, even with this like nasty faded spine, every time I look up at my books, this is the first book I see. Every single time. Um, and I was going to get rid of this, but whenever I see this book, it's always the black version, the black cover version of it. And um, I just couldn't get rid of it. It's so revolting. I like it. I like it too, but I like it because it's so, like... 80s. It's not just 80s, it's just this big, ugly, orange book. It's kind of cool. It is. With this little... And this whole thing, like, oh, we're going to put a picture, it's going to be the size of a half dollar. Because the gonna... Stephen King! Like, in case... Thing. Oh, and is there... Is there? Oh, yeah, there's a title to the book. We'll put it way down here. No one really cares. We're just selling Stephen King books at the airport bookstore. Um, but the stories in here are, um, the breathing method, uh, Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, apt pupil, and, that was really creepy. yeah, and my favorite one, the body, which is what Stand By Me is based on. And they, he somehow managed to, um, make Stand By Me a short story feel like he added a hundred pages to it that he didn't need to do. But that's just me. I have a problem with it. With the King. But his earlier stuff is so snappy and his Richard Bachman stuff is so snappy. Mm. So, um, anyway, that's my find. So, the last thing we have to do here is tag people. And since this video is as long as um lockdown i thought relevant current <laughs> current i thought we would tag 13 people wow yeah this is what you call ambitious booktube tagging do you want to hear yes because I, I was gonna yes. i was gonna go over this with you but you were in the bathroom well, I'll just have to hear it now. <laughs> You're actually going to have to say some of them. So, first off, Jason's Reads, Regina's Haunted Library, Richardson Reads, Mark, get on it. Um, I want to see some very different stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Steve Donahue. Gotta be done. Um, the Bookish Bryant. Gotta be done. The Booklectic. Gotta Dane Reads. Uh, who else do I have here? James Holder, Scott Danielson, Jorderline Reads, Ooh. Harpies in the Trees, Yes, Violet Prin, Violet Prin, and Triple T, Taylor. Talks Tales. Talks Tales. I've been watching her. She's amazing. So that's a ridiculous amount of people to tag. And it almost narrows the field so you won't have anyone to tag. But if you weren't named on here, just go ahead and do it anyway and say we tagged you because we did. Tag your it. Right? <laughs> tag. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Okay, guys. So until next time, we will see you later. Thanks for doing the tag. Bye. Bye.